Now, uh, the news headlines, the king in the car park, the secrets Richard III took to his grave as his final resting place is revealed. Now, a quick summary of tonight's news at half past seven. The former cabinet minister, Chris Hewn, has resigned his seat and faces a prison sentence after he admitted lying to avoid a speeding penalty. His party will now face a difficult by-election battle in East Lee. UKIP leader Nigel Farage told this programme he was tempted to run. Uh, I am thinking very hard about whether to stand. Uh, part of me says I'm tempted to because I was UKIP's first ever candidate when the party had just been formed. We've been going for six weeks uh, when the by-election in Eastleigh was called and I stood there um, and enjoyed it. Um, so I'm tempted on that score. The Pakistani schoolgirl shot by the Taliban for promoting girls' education has thanked supporters and said she's getting better day by day. And the Chancellor has warned Britain's big banks they will be broken up if they don't obey new rules ring-fencing their risky investment arms from their high street businesses. Now, it's been a mystery for 500 years, and now scientists have confirmed that a skeleton found under a Leicester car park is that of King Richard III. Archaeologists said the extensive marks of battle on the bones, combined with DNA matched to his living descendants, put the identification beyond reasonable doubt. And they described their discovery as truly astonishing. Here's our science reporter, Asha Tanner. When archaeologists began searching this Leicester car park, they described the dig as a long shot. But just weeks into the excavation, they made the most extraordinary discovery, a body. Today, the identity of that skeleton was made official. Beyond reasonable doubt, the individual exhumed at Greyfriars in September 2012 is indeed Richard III, the last Plantagenet King of England. The exact location of the Greyfriars Church, thought to be the last known resting place of the King, had been forgotten over the centuries, until the dig. It was this woman, Philippa Langley, who was writing a screenplay about the King, who initially funded the project and instigated the search. The first time I walked the car park, um, the, I just had the feeling. But then I came back a year later and there was a letter R right where I had the feeling that Richard's grave was. And believe me, I know how mad that sounds. But it, for, for me, that just gave me the push. It's taken months of analysis by a huge team of academics to scientifically prove beyond all reasonable doubt that this is Richard III. A tooth from the remains was used to match DNA from a living day descendant, 17th generation from the female line. Dental, uh, they're just in very good condition, um, and that, that's the best thing to go for with DNA when, you, when you're starting, yeah. And when you use the DNA from uh, Michael Ibsen, how was that taken? Spit sample. I, think I have a big tube of his spit in my lab. <laughs> to know that there's some small part of you that is part of a King of England, of Richard's status, is, uh, it's difficult to digest, I think. Deformed unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce half made up. Richard III has been portrayed as one of the great villains of medieval history. The hunchback monarch is accused of killing his own nephews, the princes in the tower, to claim the throne. His reign formed part of the dynastic struggle known as the War of the Roses. He was the last king of England to ride into battle. For centuries, it was widely believed his remains were thrown into the River Saw. But this is where he was discovered. His well-preserved skeleton was buried without a coffin or a shroud. A combination of markings on the bones and genetic analysis proved what the experts had hoped for. They suggest the king was tied when he was buried, was in his late 30s and had an unusually slender frame. The curve to his spine is believed to have formed after birth. History records that Richard suffered a bloody death on the battlefield and a CT scan reveals there were 10 wounds to the skeleton and potentially fatal injuries to his head. His naked body was hastily buried without pomp and ceremony. Next year he'll be reinterred at Leicester Cathedral in a burial his supporters say he's been waiting hundreds of years for.